Good morning, beautiful being. It is lovely to be with you. It's always lovely to be with you. And I'm inside today because it's just a bit too windy out there. Um, the sun's out, it's fine, but it's breezy. And I don't like competing with the wind. So there is a plan with no drawbacks because it means I just get to show you rocks, right? Um, so here we are. Here's a rock. This is very cute. You can see it's amethyst and quartz. I mean, amethyst is a kind of quartz. But look at the shapes on the outside of it. Um, this crystal really does mystify me because, I mean, look at that, it's such a perfect chevron. Um, because it's not been shaped like this, but I didn't think that a crystal would grow in this shape. I mean, look at it, it's bent. It's not typical quartz at all. Um, unless something is shattered, but these look like, you know, those look like growth lines, so I don't know. This doesn't look like a piece of something larger. Um, it really puzzles me. I mean, that's broken off something, I guess. But yeah, it's it's a really cool little thing, and it was just given to me by somebody um, with something else that I got. So I felt very lucky. Apparently, it's that um, amethyst that's got all these other impurities in it, and I've forgotten what its fancy schmancy name is. But um, I really like it. I just love, you know, the contrast of the colors and the shapes on the sides of it. And the fact that it mystifies me, it's like, mm, how did that happen? Good morning, beautiful people. Hi, Stephanie. I can see you there with your little bubba, who's <laughs> no longer a bubba, I'm sure. But it's lovely to see you up there. Good morning, everybody who's joining in. Even if I don't know who you are, I'm so grateful that you're here. We are talking about heart coherence today. And I just decided to show you this. This is blue stone. It is not actually a stone at all. It is a manufactured material. And it's glass, blue glass, dark blue glass, and it's got something metallic in it that shines and sparkles, and it's lovely. I really do enjoy this little one. Um, it was, this was given to me by somebody who used to come to a meditation group that my husband and I used to run here. Um, so yeah, sparkly, blue stone. A lot of people are familiar with sunstone, which is actually the same thing. It's, it's glass, and it's got sparkly bits of copper in it, so the sparkles are... Um, copper coloured instead of silver, um, and it's that lovely, warm, browny, reddy, goldy colour, and it's called sunstone, so there you go, bluestone. Um, and last but not least, this is one from my friend Jenny Paolo's collection, and the label on the back says, Smithsonite Mimitite, I think that's right, and from somewhere called Burgar, I think I read that correctly, in Namibia. So again, from somewhere amazing in Africa. Um, and I think it's a bit hard to see the Smithsonite. See that long crystal there? There's a pair of them. There's a few of them sprinkled around. They're actually a different color from what's on the background. Morning, Mike. Um, yeah, and there's another one there that's, that's shiny. You can't really see it, but it's quite gold and yellow as compared to the rest of this, which is, you know, dark. And I'm pretty sure that is the Smithsonite, because Smithsonite is this yellow colour. So it's this wonderful combination of things. You'd think this was Druzy Quartz, but it's not. It's something called Mimitite. I think I'm reading the, the label on the back correctly. I mean, there's a lot of information on that label, so, you know, I might not have got it right, but there it is. It's this amazing thing. And there's another little Smithsonite crystal there. You can see it a bit more clearly on the side. And look, it's got like a little cave... It's just a really interesting piece. Um, so, yeah, it said, show me off today. I'm sparkly. And um, there it is. So those are our rocks for today. Staying in out of the wind because it's just too breezy and I don't want to fight with the noise. So, it's so appropriate, really, given what I'm facing today. Um, but speaking yesterday about... Really, you know, the situation, being in meditation and you're creating your future and you're right there, right? And you're imagining what you want and you're not just visualizing it, you're smelling it and tasting it and feeling it and breathing it and being it. And then suddenly, kaboom, there's this intrusive thought that just races into your head. And, and you know, suddenly you're thinking about something scary or difficult or whatever it was that you don't want to put your attention on. And how do you change yourself out of that? What do you do? 
um, and quick summation. I mean, that happens. The brain makes connections. Just because there's something that you want doesn't mean that some other part of you that you're not conscious of, some other memory doesn't say, oh, that's dangerous. And the brain makes a connection and suddenly it's firing off a danger signal when you're wanting to create something wonderful. So that's what happens. And when that happens, what we have to do is not worry about the thought or the, the thing or the fact that it happened. We have to overcome the emotion. That's the only thing you have to do is overcome the emotion. Um, and I understand this better today than I did yesterday because yesterday afternoon I dipped my head into the book that I'm reading and got another wow fact, right? Another really, really wow fact. Um, because I'm reading about receptors on cells and the neuropeptides, which is what pours from our brain to our body and basically gives us feelings. That's it in a very, very small, small, smaller than small, small nutshell. And what I discovered, or what this lady discovered in her research, is that the receptors on our cells, remember the receptors can change their shapes depending on what we keep pouring onto them, which is why we have to sometimes take so long saying, no, I want squares, not triangles. We talked about that yesterday. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, listen to yesterday. Um, those receptors, there are lots and lots of those receptors in the places in the body where there are clusters of neurons or th neurons coming together called ganglia. And those ganglia are like gatekeepers on the sensory information that comes into you from the environment. Which means that depending on what receptors are easy for you to activate or not on those ganglia, depends what information can actually get to you. It's like an oh shit moment. So you mean if I've conditioned my receptors on my nerves to be really sensitive to fear chemicals, but not very good at doing happy chemicals, that it is way, way, way easier for me to feel fearful than it is to feel happy. Yes. And it's like the happy thought literally can't get to you because it's being filtered out by the fact that your receptors can only get chemicals relating to scared thoughts. This is like an oh my God. No wonder my inspiration, Dr. Joe Dispenza, says you just have to keep giving yourself the experience. You have to teach your body emotionally what your future is going to be like now. Because you have to change those receptors on your cells. And you have to do it for long enough and in more, with enough intensity and however long it takes to make that change from triangles to squares. I was like, oh, Beck. The information that we want to receive, you know, the wisdom, the insight, the whatever it is, is only available to us when we've broken out of the shitty emotions. Literally. It just can't get in. There's a filter. There's filters everywhere. And what receptors are most available on our cells affects what information can get through to us. As the, the author writes, there is no objective reality. And... I have a whole new understanding of this now because literally the mechanism that you and I use to receive information from the outside, the world outside our body to inside our body is conditioned to the kind of information it can receive depending on what we've been thinking and feeling about for however long. Oh my God. So, you know, <laughs> that's pretty mind blowing to me. That really is mind blowing. If you want to have your mind blown, go and read We'll start reading. I mean, I haven't finished it. This is the book, Molecules of Emotion by Candice B. Pert, PhD. Um, really blowing my mind. Some of the some of the information is really dense. I read a little bit, and then I sometimes go back and read it again because I think I didn't get all of that. Um, but it's just opening up a deeper understanding of what I've learned from Dr. Joe. And Dr. Joe is very hooked in, of course, to psychoneuroimmunology, which is what Candace essentially um, discovered. And, they, you know, they work together in What the Bleep, and they're all in the same kind of scientific community. So that was my wow from yesterday. And today, so many rampaging, wandering thoughts Plenty of reasons to feel upset, plenty of reasons to fear the future and feel angry about the past. Sit down for my morning meditation and I gotta overcome that shit if I'm gonna do anything useful. I gotta get those default mode networks, which have had plenty of reasons to fire up and, you know, make me scared and angry um, over the last little while. So, 
I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> okay? When I say you can use your heart to hack your brain to get through your nasty emotions. Sandy, good morning, sweetie. Um, we have to. It's the only way I know that actually works because positive thinking doesn't do anything because I can be thinking, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm feeling good. And my body, meanwhile, you know, my stomach's churning and it wants to climb up the wall. That doesn't work. That's what positive thinking used to mean to me. And it still pretty much does. It's positive thinking. But if my mind and my body are not in agreement, I'm just wasting my thinking time. I mean, it's better than just, you know, wallowing in misery. But for me, not much because there's a conflict. And that conflict is very painful for me. i got to get mind and body in agreement. So, to hack your brain out of that kind of ah, heart coherence. Heart coherence can be measured when you measure the interval between the beats of the heart. The heart has a rhythm, right? And it turns out that if you measure the interval between the beats, that makes a pattern. And it should be really regular like this. It goes up and it goes down because as we breathe in, our heart rate naturally accelerates a little bit. And when we breathe out, our heart rate naturally goes down. That's the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system doing their job regulating the body. It should be like that. When we are incoherent, when we're upset, angry, fearful, depressed, whatever it is, any unpleasant, stressful emotion, that lovely smooth rhythm that you feel when you're feeling an elevated emotion becomes all jagged. And it frequently gets really tight. We lose heart rate variability. And good heart rate variability is an in, actually an indicator of health, long story short. So heart rate variability, you get a nice even heart rate when you start to entrain your heart by putting your attention in here and you breathe in and out. Remember, breathe in, sympathetic nervous system, breathe out, parasympathetic nervous system. Every time you breathe in, especially if you do it with attention and you regulate it, you're regulating your autonomic nervous system. That is the power that makes your body and heals your body, by the way. The autonomic nervous system does so much for your mind would explode if you even tried to comprehend it for one second. It, it, trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of functions in a second. And then another trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions, right? This is the power that's running your body. Abigail, good morning. So to put your attention in your heart and breathe in and out is a great way to help it do its job. And as you do that, you are starting, if you persist, because I was in fairly, you know, scrambly mode this morning when I started. Um, my brain was skittering around like a herd of cats and screaming monkeys. Um, my body didn't want to settle either. And I had to work for it to keep my attention there. And my brain was wandering off into what's happening later today, into what happened yesterday and how I feel about it. It's like, no, I've got to bring my attention back here. I do. Because the process I was doing was heart-centered. And today, I mean, quite often I get deep into it. I, I you know, my, my emotions rise, my, my energy changes, um, I release tears, whatever. Today, it was a battle. It was a battle. But I just did it anyway because I know that sooner or later my brain and my body are going to surrender. Um, and I got into the meditation, you know, the short process and then the long one. I got into the meditation. I was doing it about halfway through. Everything went quiet. Oh, thank God I'm in the theater now. I've got a brain. I can connect with the unified field. I can receive information. I can calm down. My body's finally gone to sleep. You know, it's such a blessing. Sanchia, good morning to be able to do this. So, um, and I got so deep that, you know, it, it was it was blissful and there was energy flowing and there was energy releasing. My body was roiling around the place, but my brain was calm. The body can be really busy releasing energy. My brain was just observing, you know, this is happening. And right towards the end, I got a really powerfully clear visual, something I've never seen before. Um, and it's difficult to describe. With any accuracy. Um, yeah, I can't really. So I won't try. It'll take too long. But I've never seen anything like that before. It was real. It wasn't my imagination. It was real. Um, and it was in the process of coming back. And I was ignoring the coming back because I was told to ignore that. Um, and we were sort of, you know, halfway through that. And then I had this visual, which wasn't a visual. I was there. And it was so powerful. It, kind of, it brought me back into my body. Um, I was like, oh, damn, <laughs> it would have been really nice if it lasted longer. Um, I'm back now, bugger, because <laughs> it was really good not being, you know, 
in three dimensions. I was gone. I was in the unified field. It was beautiful. It was such a relief. Um, but I have that now, and I have that to tune into today because I, I, I was told, again, that energy is going to be working with you today. All you've got to do is tune into it. And while I was there, while my brain had finally calmed down and shut off, the information that I need for crucial points today came to me just floated into my head because I was no longer in the fight or flight, angry, resentful, upset, whatever it is, worried about what's going to come state. Just not there. And so the information that I need is just given to me from the unified field. That's how it works. So um, you got to change your state. you got to get different chemistry in your body so different receptors can receive different information. That's what happens. Congratulations, Dale. Every time we overcome ourselves like this, it's a victory. And I'm really proud of me because I had to wrestle with myself today. Um, and, you know, when I open my eyes, it's like, oh, yeah, I know I've still got a face today. But my brain is just going to work better. My brain is just going to work better. And therefore, I'm going to work better and I can stay in my heart. So while we've still got some time, let's practice this, right? Um, to hack your brain and, you know, this is why you can't keep on... Oh, of course, Dale, it's been a little while. G'day, Lindsay, it's lovely. It's lovely to see you again. It's been a while, as you say. Um, so, we have to change our state. So, whatever's going on, put your awareness in the center of your chest and close your eyes. Give yourself a break from the external stimulus of what's out there. And bring your breath into your heart. And it feels quite strange for a long time for me. It felt strange to breathe in and out of my heart. But just try it. You can experiment with breathing in and out this way. You can experiment with breathing in and out the back. I really like that. I forget to do that. Try that. Try breathing in and out to both sides at the same time, just for something really unusual. Try it. Be adventurous. Breathe in and out of your heart in different directions. G'day Jen, lovely to see you. Give it a go. Dare to have a new experience. Dare to disagree with the programs in your mind and your body that are saying you need to worry about this, you need to stress about this. How is that helping you? It's just shutting out the information you need. Just, yeah, when we're often when we're not paying attention, that's when things will change. You're quite right, Lindsay. As long as we're fighting with it, wrestling with it, thinking about it, the analytical mind is busy. You're not in your heart, you're thinking. So put your attention in your heart and breathe in and out. And if you're feeling like playing further, imagine that your breath is expanding all around your heart like a balloon. Now you can include up and down. Choose the color. Maybe it's a light and it glows. Breathe in and out. Play with it. But keep your attention in your heart and breathe. And as you do... Make your breath longer. Comfortably, please. Not to force it, not to push it. Just relax into it and play with lengthening your breath, particularly the out-breath. Why the out-breath? Because your parasympathetic nervous system gets activated as you breathe out. And that is your rest and digest and relax and slow down and calm down and center system. So as you lengthen the out-breath, Follow your breath gently. Just let your breath guide you, but have the intention to lengthen it and soften it and relax your body. Keep breathing out. I actually need to mention that I find if I sigh heavily, it doesn't help me at all. I actually need to take a breath, you know, Hold it for a while so the oxygen gets a chance to get into my body. And then let it out slowly and I find that really much more calming. So try that. Breathe in slowly and quite deeply into your heart and then hold the breath for a little while. Easily. It's not a huge full breath. You're not trying to breathe in so you burst. Just breathe in and hold it for a bit. And then let it flow out slowly slowly yeah when you're not thinking of anything your brain has stopped Lindsay 
That's exactly what happened. You went into alpha for a while instead of being in beta. And it's such a relief to stop thinking. So it happened on its own, which is great. But if you want to consciously make it happen, you have to stop thinking and start sensing. And putting your sensate awareness into your heart is a good way to do this. So if you're putting your attention in your heart, you're breathing in and out, you're creating colors or shapes and you're opening your awareness around your heart with every breath, then you're also beginning to practice an open focus. And the more you do this, because you're sensing the space around your heart and you can breathe in and blow the space up around you like a balloon, and you can breathe out and let it come back into you like a warm light that sort of warms you up. Or you can breathe out and just let it get bigger. Myself, I like that. Because I want to open my focus. Because I know that when I open my focus and I keep sensing the space around me, more and more in front of me. How far can I go in front of me? Really? I mean, if my awareness is sliding out in front of me, how far, how much space is there in front of me? And not just in front of me like a narrow road, but a whole horizon from one side to the other. How much space is there in front of me? And we're doing this really fast, but just explore if there's that same horizon behind you. Can you open your awareness out into that? Keep Opening your awareness. I do this when I want to go to sleep, Sandy. I just open my focus and open my focus and open my focus. Because when you do this, you're going to get your brain out of beta and it's going to start getting into coherent alpha. And alpha is next to theta and theta is what you go into when you're going to sleep. So this really is very useful. So keep your awareness. You can alternate your awareness, if you like, between your heart Bring it in there, warm it up with love, with affection, with care for yourself. And then open your awareness out to the space around you, on both sides of you. How far can you open your awareness on both sides of you? Not just to one side or the other, but above and to the side, and below and to the sides, and behind you to the sides, and in front of you to the sides. How much can you open your heart out into that space? And the more you do this, and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's a wrestling match, if you persist, your brain will slow down and you will change your state because if you keep putting your awareness in your heart and you keep breathing there and you keep relaxing your body down into right now and you don't let your brain wander off into the thoughts and the feelings, you keep coming back to it, sooner or later it's going to give in, it's going to surrender and say, okay, I'm just here right now, breathing. And it's work. And it's an effort. And there are beautiful guided meditations that Dr. Joe Dispenza has created, which I use every day because they work so well for me, which will guide you through this. Um, they're powerful. They're not like the normal, oh, you know, sweet little relaxing voice. They're, they're powerful, but they're beautiful. And um, I'm really well conditioned to using those now, so I'm very easy in that space. And I can't speak highly enough of that work. It's changed me and it's changed my life. And it's healing me and it's healing my body. So I'm over time, but you see, I get into this stuff. Big love. Thank you for joining with me. I would love to know your feedback. I know some of you already dropped your feedback and that's great. I'd love to know what challenges you found and I'd love to know what your pain points are. I haven't asked you for questions for ages. If you've got a question, please ask. I get the best lives, we create the best lives when you ask me questions. Without questions, it's kind of like, oh shit, what am I going to talk about tomorrow? So I'd love to know what your burning questions are or your just little niggles. Mike, it's lovely to see you, sweetheart. Again, <laughs> you popped up at the beginning, popped up at the end. I suddenly thought, oh, Mike's just come on. No, um, you've been with us all the time. I'm going to sign off now. Big love. You can hack your brain, you can hack your heart. And you can break out of your nasty emotions. 
It just takes an effort of will and knowing how and some determination and effort. And it's always worth it. Big love. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye.